Chapter 6 The Price of Remembering It was early evening of the next day before Chronicler came down the stairs to the common room of the Waystone Inn. Pale and unsteady, he carried his flat leather satchel under one arm. Coat sat behind the bar, paging through a book. Ah, our unintentional guest. How's the head? Chronicler raised a hand to touch the back of his head. Throbs a bit when I move around too quickly, but it's still working. Glad to hear it, Coat said. Is this... Chronicler hesitated, looking around. Are we in Noir? Coat nodded. You are, in fact, in the middle of Noir. He made a dramatic sweeping gesture with one hand. Thriving metropolis, home to dozens. Chronicler stared at the red-haired man behind the bar. He leaned against one of the tables for support. God's charred body, he said breathlessly. It really is you, isn't it? The innkeeper looked puzzled. I beg your pardon? I know you're going to deny it, Chronicler said. But what I saw last night... The innkeeper held up a hand, quieting him. Before we discuss the possibility that you've addled your wits with that crack to the head, tell me, how is the road to Tanu? What? Chronicler asked, irritated. I wasn't heading to Tanu. I was... Oh. Well, even aside from last night, the road's been pretty rough. I was robbed off by Abbott's Ford, and I've been on foot ever since. But it was all worth it since you're actually here. The scribe glanced at the sword hanging over the bar and drew a deep breath, his expression becoming vaguely anxious. I'm not here to cause trouble, mind you. I'm not here because of the price on your head. He gave a weak smile. Not that I could hope to trouble you. Fine. The innkeeper interrupted as he pulled out a white linen cloth and began to polish the bar. Who are you, then? You can call me Chronicler. I didn't ask what I could call you, Coates said. What is your name? Devon. Devon Lockies. Coates stopped pol polishing the bar and looked up. Lockies? Are you related to Duke... Coat trailed off, nodding to himself. Yes, of course you are. Not a chronicler. The chronicler. He stared hard at the balding man, looking him up and down. How about that? The great debunker himself. Chronicler relaxed slightly, obviously pleased to have his reputation precede him. I wasn't trying to be difficult before. I haven't thought of myself as Devin in years. I left that name behind me long ago. He gave the innkeeper a significant look. I expect you know something of that yourself. Coat ignored the unspoken question. I read your book years ago, The Mating Habits of the Common Dracus. Quite the eye-opener for a young man with his head full of stories. Looking down, he began moving the white cloth along the grain of the bar again. I'll admit, I was disappointed to learn that dragons didn't exist. That's a hard lesson for a boy to learn. Chronicler smiled. Honestly, I was a little disappointed myself. I went looking for a legend and found a lizard. A fascinating lizard, but a lizard all the same. And now you're here, Coat said. Have you come to prove that I don't exist? Chronicler laughed nervously. No, you see, we heard a rumor. We? Code interrupted. I've been traveling with an old friend of yours, Scarpy. Taking you under his wing, has he? Code said to himself. How about that? Scarpy's apprentice. More of a colleague, really. Code nodded, still expressionless. I might have guessed he would be the first to find me. Rumor mongers, both of you. Chronicler's smile grew sour, and he swallowed the first words that came to his lips. He struggled for a moment to recapture his calm demeanor. So what can I do for you? Coat set aside the clean linen cloth and gave his best innkeeper smile. Something to eat or drink? A room for the night? Chronicler hesitated. I have it all right here. Coat gestured expansively behind the bar. Old wine, smooth and pale, honey mead, dark ale, sweet fruit liquor, plum, cherry, green apple, blueberry, blackberry? Coat pointed out the bottles in turn. Come now, surely you must want something. As he spoke, his smile widened, showing too many teeth for a friendly innkeeper's grin. At the same time, his eyes grew cold, and hard, and angry. Chronicler dropped his gaze. I thought that... You thought? Coat said deriv derisively, dropping all pretense of a smile. I very much doubt it. Otherwise, you might have thought, he bit off the word, of how much danger you were putting me in by coming here. Chronicler's face grew red. I'd heard that Kvoth was fearless, he said hotly. The innkeeper shrugged. Only priests and fools are fearless, and I've never been on the best of terms with God. Chronicler frowned, aware that he was being baited. Listen, he continued calmly. I was extraordinarily careful. No one except Scarpy knew I was coming. I didn't mention you to anyone. I didn't expect to actually find you. Imagine my relief, Coates said sarcastically. Obviously disheartened, Chronicler spoke. I'll be the first to admit that my coming here may have been a mistake. He paused, giving Coates the opportunity to contradict him. Coates didn't. Chronicler gave a small, tight sigh and continued. But what's done is done. Won't you even consider... Coat shook his head. It was a long time ago. Not even two years, Chronicler protested. And I'm not what I was. Coat continued without pausing. 
And what was that exactly? Kavath. He said, simply, refusing to be drawn any further into an explanation. Now I am coat. I tend to my inn. That means beer is three shims and a private room costs copper. He began polishing the bar again with a fierce intensity. As you said, done is done. The stories will take care of themselves. But Coat looked up, and for a second, Chronicler saw past the anger that lay glittering on the surface of his eyes. For a moment, he saw the pain underneath, raw and bloody, like a wound too deep for healing. Then Coat looked away, and only the anger remained. What could you possibly offer me that is worth the price of remembering? Everyone thinks you're dead. You don't get it, do you? Coat shook his head, stuck between amusement and exasperation. That's the whole point. People don't look for you when you're dead. Old enemies don't try to settle scores. People don't come asking you for stories, he said acidly. Chronicle refused to back down. Other people say you're a myth. I am a myth, Coat said easily, making an extravagant gesture. A very special kind of myth that creates itself. The best lies about me are the ones I told. They say you never existed, Chronicler corrected gently. Coat shrugged nonchalantly, his smile fading an imperceptible amount. Sensing weakness, Chronicler continued, Some stories paint you as little more than a red-handed killer. I'm that too. Coat turned to polish the counter behind the bar. He shrugged again, not as easily as before. I've killed men and things that were more than men. Every one of them deserved it. Chronicler shook his head, slowly. The stories are saying assassin, not hero. Quoth the arcane and quoth the kingkiller are two very different men. Coates stopped polishing the bar and turned his back to the room. He nodded once without looking up. Some are even saying that there is a new Shandrian, a fresh terror in the night, his hair as red as the bloody spills. The important people know the difference, Coates said as if he were trying to convince himself, but his voice was weary and despairing, without convention. Chronicler gave a small laugh. <laughs> Certainly, for now. But you of all people should realize how thin the line is between the truth and a compelling lie, between history and an entertaining story. Chronicler gave his words a minute to sink in. You know which will win, given time. Coat remained facing the back wall, hands flat on the counter. His head was bowed slightly, as if a great weight had settled onto him. He did not speak. Chronicler took an eager step forward, sensing victory. Some people say there was a woman. What do they know? Coat's voice cut like a saw through bone. What do they know about what happened? He spoke so softly that Chronicler had to hold his breath to hear. They say she... Chronicler's words stuck in his suddenly dry throat as the room grew unnaturally quiet. Coat stood with his back to the room, a stillness in his body and a terrible silence clenched between his teeth. His right hand, tangled in a clean white cloth, made a slow fist. Eight inches away, a bottle shattered. The smell of strawberries filled the air alongside the sound of splintering glass. A small noise inside so great a stillness, but it was enough. Enough to break the silence into sharp, small slivers. Chronicler felt himself go cold as he suddenly realized what a dangerous game he was playing. So this is the difference between telling a story and being in one, he thought numbly. The fear. Coat turned. What can any of them know about her? He asked softly. Chronicler's breath stopped when he saw Coat's face. The placid innkeeper's expression was like a shattered mask. Underneath, Coat's expression was haunted, eyes half in this world, half elsewhere, remembering. Chronicler found himself thinking of a story he had heard, one of the many. The story told of how Quoth had gone looking for his heart's desire. He had to trick a demon to get it, but once it rested in his hand, he was forced to fight an angel to keep it. I believe it, Chronicler found himself thinking, before it was just a story, but now I can believe it. This is the face of a man who has killed an angel. What can any of them know about me? Coat demanded, a numb anger in his voice. What can they know about any of this? He made a short, fierce gesture that seemed to take in everything. The broken bottle, the bar, the world. Chronicler swallowed against the dryness in his throat. Only what they're told. Tat, 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 tat. Liquor from the broken bottle began to patter in a regular rhythm on the floor. Ah, Coat sighed out a long breath. Tat, 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 tat. Clever. You'd use my own best trick against me. You'd hold my story a hostage. I would tell the truth. Nothing but the truth could break me. What is harder than the truth? A sickly, mocking smile flickered across his face. For a long moment, only the gentle tapping of drops against the floor kept the silence at bay. Finally, Coat walked through the doorway behind the bar. Chronicler stood awkwardly in the empty room, unsure whether or not he'd been dismissed. A few minutes later, Coat returned with a bucket of soapy water. Without looking in the storyteller's direction, he began to gently, methodically, wash his bottles. One at a time, 
Coat wiped their bottoms clean of the strawberry wine and set them on the bar between himself and Chronicler, as if they might defend him. So you went looking for a myth and found a man, he said, without inflection, without looking up. You've heard the stories, and now you want the truth of things. Radiating relief, Chronicler set his satchel down on one of the tables, surprised at the slight tremor in his hands. We got wind of you a while back. Just a whisper of a rumor. I didn't really expect... Chronicler paused, suddenly awkward. I thought you would be older. I am, Coates said. Chronicle looked puzzled, but before he could say anything, the innkeeper continued. What brings you into this worthless little corner of the world? An appointment with the Earl of baden Brit, Chronicler said, puffing himself up slightly. Three days from now, in Treya. The innkeeper's paused mid-polish. You expect to make it to the Earl's manor in four days? He asked quietly. I am behind schedule, Chronicler admitted. My horse was stolen near Abbot's Ford. He glanced out the window at the darkening sky. Well, I'm willing to lose some sleep. I'll be off in the morning and out of your hair. Well, I wouldn't want to cost you any sleep, Coat said sarcastically. His eyes gone hard again. I could tell the whole thing in one breath. He cleared his throat. I trooped, traveled, loved, lost, trusted, and was betrayed. Write that down and burn it for all the good it will do you. You needn't take it that way, Chronicler said quickly. We can take the whole night if you like, and a few hours in the morning as well. How gracious, Coat snapped. You'll have me tell my story in an evening with no time to collect myself, no time to prepare? His mouth made a thin line. No. Go dally with your Earl. I'll have none of it. Chronicler spoke quickly. If you're certain you'll need, yes. Coat set a bottle down hard on the bar. Hard. It's safe to say I'll need more time than that, and you'll get none of it tonight. A real story takes time to prepare. Chronicler frowned nervously and ran his hands through his hair. I could spend tomorrow collecting your story. He trailed off at the sight of Coat, shaking his head. After a pause, he started again, almost talking to himself. If I pick up a horse in Baden, I can give you all day tomorrow, most of the night, and a piece of the following day. He rubbed his forehead. I hate riding at night, but I'll need three days, Coat said. I'm quite sure of it. Chronicler blanched, but the Earl. Coat waved a hand dismissively. No one needs three days, Chronicler said firmly. I interviewed Orin Velsiter. Orin Velsiter, mind you. He's 80 years old and done 200 years worth of living. 500 if you count the lies. He sought me out, Chronicler said with particular emphasis. He only took two days. That is my offer, the innkeeper said simply. I'll do this properly or not at all. Hold on a moment. Crocker brightened suddenly. I've been thinking about all this backward. He said, shaking his head his own foolishness. I'll just visit the Earl, then come back. You can have all the time you like then. I could even bring Scarpy back with me. Coat gave Crocker a look of profound disdain. What gives you the slightest impression that I would be here when you came back? He asked incredulously. For that matter, what makes you think you're free to simply walk out of here, knowing what you know? Crocker went very still. Art. He swallowed, starting again. Are you saying that? The story will take three days, Code interrupted, starting tomorrow. That is what I am saying. Quantiker closed his eyes and ran his hand over his face. The Earl would be furious, of course. No telling what it might take to get back in his good graces. Still, if that's the only way I can get it, I accept. I'm glad to hear it. The innkeeper relaxed into a half-smile. Come now. Is three days really so unusual? Quantiker's serious expression returned. Three days is quite unusual. But then again... Some of the self-importance seemed to leak out of him. Then again, he made a gesture as if to show how useless words are. You are a quoth. The man who called himself Coat looked up from behind his bottles. A full lip smile played about his mouth. A spark was kindling behind his eyes. He seemed taller. Yes, I suppose I am, Coth said, and his voice had iron in it.